Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my quarantine Thanksgiving menu. So this is week two of the menu. If you're just joining us, you can get caught up by clicking the playlist below and that will show you the other recipes that are part of this series. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make a super simple turkey dinner that can all be put in the oven at the same time. And if you're not already a subscriber, be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and then that way you won't miss the other recipes that are part of this menu. Okay, let's dive in. Now what is gonna make this turkey dinner so easy is we are going to roast everything except for the stuffing on a sheet pan. And then you can set it and forget it, which allows you time to visit with your family, have a glass of wine and some cocktail nibbles, which I'm gonna show you how to make in an upcoming episode. So the first thing we wanna do is create our garlic herb butter that's going to go under the skin of our turkey. So in this pitcher, I have three tablespoons of unsalted butter. And then to that, I'm gonna add a half a teaspoon of salt, a little freshly cracked pepper, and two garlic cloves. So now I have about a tablespoon of chopped rosemary. In it goes there. And that's all we have to do for our delicious garlic rosemary butter. All right, let's talk turkey now. So I have got a double breast turkey breast. So the way that you find this in the market, it'll probably say turkey breast with ribs. That means it actually has the bone in it. I like the double breast if you're going for three people to six people. Now, if you're cooking for one or two, then I would say buy the split breast and just buy one. So we want to position our turkey in the center. And then you also want to make sure that your butter has been cooled so that we're not going to actually start to cook the turkey <laughs> before we're ready. And then if you've never done this before, don't be squeamish. This is part of being anointed as the Thanksgiving cook. You really want to get in there under the skin and you'll see there's a pocket. See that pocket? That actually needs to be loosened either with your fingertips or a spoon. Um, because the pocket is where we are going to put our delicious herb butter. So in it goes. And don't worry if it goes all over the turkey or all over the pan. That actually is totally fine. It is just going to add more flavor everywhere it goes. And then see, you can take the skin and kind of push out your spoon and then massage all that delicious garlic butter inside. And the other thing you want to do to get a nice crispy skin is just drizzle a little bit of olive oil on top and then brush your turkey with the olive oil. And this will create a really nice crispy skin that won't burn. And then you also can add a little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt. Okay, so now we are gonna fill in both sides with the vegetables. And when thinking about what were the most cost-effective vegetables, I come back to my two favorites, potatoes and carrots. They are the cheapest vegetables out there. But not to worry, we're gonna gussy them up for the special occasion and make them look totally elegant and fabulous. Okay, so first for the potatoes. I have some Dutch baby potatoes here, but we're gonna do something extra special to them. We're gonna create little slits to create mini Hasselback potatoes, which nothing screams holiday more like a Hasselback potato, right? And you wanna slice so that you're doing like maybe an eighth of an inch incisions. The one thing you wanna do is just make sure you don't cut all the way through when you're making your slices. These incisions will open up, which will be really delicious. The only other thing we wanna to do to them at this stage is just drizzle with a little bit of olive oil. This is what's gonna help the potato skin get really nice and crispy as it roasts. And then you can also add a little bit of salt and pepper on top. So how easy was that? One side dish done. Now, if you're cooking for one, you could just add one potato, you could add two potato. Really just add however many you think you're gonna need per person, knowing that you can get at least six, maybe seven or eight on the tray. Okay, so now we're going to add the carrots. So you can really up your game a little bit by looking for what they call rainbow carrots. So rainbow carrots look like this. They come in different colors. The ones I have here are orange, yellow, and like a white. It almost looks like a parsnip. I think you wanna factor in like, I don't know, four, four to five carrots per person. I just basically peeled them, chopped off the tops, and if the thickness of the carrot was bigger than say a nickel, then I would cut it in half like this. If they're smaller than a nickel, more like a dime, then I would just leave them whole like that. One thing we are gonna do is glaze our carrots with a little bit of maple syrup. So in a large bowl, we're going to add a tablespoon of olive oil, a tablespoon of maple syrup, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, so I have about a tablespoon of thyme going in, and that's just gonna be a really lovely counterbalance to the sweetness of the carrots, to have a little bit of something savory like the thyme. Okay, then we're gonna toss our carrots in, and then with some tongs, you can just give them a toss. 
Okay, now we're gonna go back to our tray here and we're going to put this on the other side. And look, we just made a turkey and two side dishes in like a matter of minutes. Then we're gonna place this tray in a 375 degree Fahrenheit oven for an hour and 30 minutes. But really the best way to know when your turkey is done is with a meat thermometer. I like to take turkey out at about 160, 162 degrees Fahrenheit, let it rest for 15 minutes covered in foil, and then it will come up to the proper temperature, which should be 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, let's talk about cranberry sauce. So normally I am a homemade by scratch cranberry sauce person, <laughs> especially if I'm having a big crowd of 20 plus people. But I get that this year with only four of us, I might not go down that road. So I wanted to show you how you can make canned cranberry sauce taste a little bit more gourmet and homemade. When you take it out of the can, don't be alarmed because it's gonna look like that. <laughs> but that's okay, it's not gonna stay like that. When you begin to press it down with a fork, you'll see some of the whole cranberries. And in fact, I think some brands are better than others. I will leave you a link in the description for the brand that I like best. Okay, so now what we wanna do is just peel some orange into our cranberry sauce. So I'm using just a mandarin because you don't probably wanna waste a whole orange because we don't need very much. So I would do probably, I don't know, three or four peels. And you can do this the day before. And in fact, it's even better the day before because then all of these flavors will marry. Then you can go ahead and cut this little mandarin in half and add the juice as well. Then you wanna add an eighth of a teaspoon of ground cloves. That's gonna give it a delicious warming flavor. And then the other thing I like to add is some fresh ginger. And you're looking for anywhere between a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. I tend to go the full teaspoon just because I think it adds so much flavor uh, to the cranberry sauce with the orange. It's such a great flavor combination. And then to heighten all these flavors, we're also just gonna add a little bit of salt. There, and that's all you have to do. And then you can stir this all together and no one will know the difference. <laughs> Now, your turkey dinner would be perfectly lovely with just the carrots and the potatoes and the turkey. But if you wanna kick it up a notch, I say add the stuffing. I don't know, I'm a real stuffing person at Thanksgiving. It's a bit of a deal breaker if I don't have the stuffing. <laughs> and the nice thing about this stuffing recipe is we are gonna be making it in a muffin tin. The muffin tin also slides in really easily with the turkey on the lower rack, so it makes cooking this whole meal together super simple. Okay, so for the stuffing, we're gonna make this real easy and work with pre-sliced sourdough bread cut it into small little chunks. So tell me, what is your deal breaker at Thanksgiving? Is it the stuffing? Is it the gravy? Is it the pumpkin pie? It's funny, every family has their sort of deal breaking moment where if it's not on the table, people get upset, they get mad. One year, I don't know what my parents were thinking, but they actually served a ham for Thanksgiving. Oh, did my parents hear about it? <laughs> Nobody wanted the ham. It usually only happens once. Now, another thing we wanna do is actually pop these bread cubes in the oven just for 10 minutes at 350 degrees. And what that will do is dry out the bread um, to make a better stuffing. Because if we just worked with this the way it is, we would end up with like a bread ball. <laughs> you really need dried out bread to retain its shape. Then for the vegetables for your stuffing, you're going to melt some butter in a pan. Then you're gonna add half a cup of white onion, a half a cup of diced celery, and a half a cup of diced carrots. Then you can saute those up until they're nice and fragrant. Season with salt and pepper. And then you're gonna add a tablespoon of fresh sage and fresh thyme, and two tablespoons of a dry white wine, like a Chardonnay. Okay, now to bind our stuffing together in a large bowl, we're going to add two eggs and two cups of chicken broth. And this is gonna help prevent our stuffing from being too dry inside. It'll become more soft and sort of almost custardy inside. Then we're gonna add our dried out bread cubes so they can go right on top. We wanna put the bread cubes in first so that we can stir them around and make sure that they soak up all of that chicken broth and the egg. And then we can add our delicious sauteed veggies that we just cooked. I would make sure they're a little bit cooled just so that you don't cook that egg. So if this is like the basic stuffing recipe, you really can add two to three different mix-ins that you like. For me, that would be two tablespoons of dried cranberries, and then I'm also gonna add two tablespoons of chopped pecans. And then I also like to add two tablespoons of diced apple, skins and all. And now we can put it in our muffin tin. So I'm gonna be using a jumbo muffin tin just because I find that the serving size is really nice. If you didn't have a jumbo tin, you could also do this in a 12 cup tin and maybe give everybody two. But you do wanna spray it first with a little bit of baking spray, just like that, just so that they don't stick. 
Okay, and then all you have to do is fill up your muffin tin with your stuffing. And probably about two scoops per muffin is what it'll take. I don't like to pack it down too much because I think the lighter the stuffing, the lighter your stuffing will actually be. It also will preserve the bread cubes so that you'll get some nice crispiness on top. Then if you pack it in, you may lose some of that definition. And then the final step is just to spray each one with a little bit of olive oil. And this will assure you'll get that really beautiful golden brown crispy top. Now, if you were making this a day ahead, I would just cover this with foil and pop it in your fridge. And then about 40 minutes before your turkey is ready, go ahead and put it down in the bottom rack. Move the turkey pan to, a little bit to the right so that it has some more space so that he can get down in through it. So after the stuffing goes in, then you can get your garlic herb butter ready for the potatoes. <laughs> now, you don't have to do this step. I know we've used a lot of butter and calories so far, but this really does set them over the edge. Okay, so I have some melted butter here that I'm just going to put in to a little Pyrex pitcher. See, it doesn't take much because those potatoes are so small. And then you're gonna add a teaspoon of the fresh sage. You could use thyme or rosemary if you prefer that. And then we're also going to add one clove of garlic. And then we're just gonna mix this up with a pastry brush. And every so often as you're checking doneness of your turkey, then you can go in there and just brush the tops of the potatoes. And you'll see the butter and the garlic and the herbs will just seep down into those slices of the potato. And it is so delicious. While your turkey is resting, you can keep your vegetables warm by placing them in the oven with the stuffing. Then to carve a bird like this, the simplest thing to do is just to cut it down the breastbone and then cut along the side. This will release the breast meat and allow you to cut nice slices. Now, as your turkey is roasting, you'll notice a beautiful pan sauce will develop. You can use that to baste the turkey with, or you can also reserve it to drizzle it on top of the turkey once it's done. All right, you guys, there you have it. A full Thanksgiving dinner that hopefully is not gonna break the bank and will still feel festive and fun for Thanksgiving. All right, you guys, I will see you back here next week when we're gonna tackle some homemade breads to go with this dinner. All right, you guys, I'll see you then. Bye.